Uh, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the very first breakout session of the 2022 IT Professionals Conference. I am Laurel Bellman, and I will be moderating this session on cybersecurity governance, risk and compliance, GRC. What is it and why should I care? Uh, so we're going to begin with our presenters just very briefly introducing themselves followed by their presentation, and then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. So please feel free to put any questions you might have in the chat, and I will keep my eye on them and make sure that they get read out to our presenters. So please note, um, as you just heard, we are recording this presentation and an accessible video will be made for, will be available for viewing on the IT Professionals Conference website in probably just about one or two weeks. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters who will go ahead and introduce themselves. Thanks, Laurel. Um, I'm going to start. My name is Amy Diesler. I'm the Cybersecurity Governance Risk and Compliance Manager for the School of Medicine and Public Health. Uh, Steve, do you want to go next? Yeah, my name is Steve Baring, a cybersecurity engineer and architect for the School of Medicine and Public Health, and I've uh, been involved in GRC for getting close to a decade now. Uh, Jerry, would you like to go? Absolutely. Um, so I'm Jerry Johnson. I, I also work with Amy and Steve over at the med school as an information security analyst. Um, I work on things like auditing policies and reporting on the overall cybersecurity landscape at SNPH. But I also dabble in incident response as well. And I'm just excited to be here uh, to talk about GRC. Um, Darvesh, you want to take it away? Sure, thanks. I'm Darvesh Narayan. I am the Campus HIPAA Security Officer here at UW-Madison, and I'm also the HIPAA Team Lead within the Office of Cybersecurity, and I help ensure that uh, UW-Madison is doing their due diligence to protect PHI on campus. Fantastic. Well, then we will go ahead and get started on what is Cybersecurity GRC. Awesome. So what is GRC, and specifically, what is it with its relationship to cybersecurity? So overall, uh, GRC is about an organization's strategy revolving around the GR and the C, right? The governance, risk management, and compliance specifically in regards to like regulatory and legal requirements. Now, GRC extends into many different areas of cybersecurity, including data privacy, vulnerability management, incident response, and let's push plenty more. Um, now, Darvesh and Steve, my colleagues, will go into a governance, risk, and compliance a little bit more in depth in the coming slides. But just very briefly, um, governance is all about aligning an entity's operations and decision making with its goals. Um, one of the things that governance might look at, for example, is if it's an organizational goal to keep data confidential and make sure it has integrity, how is this achieved? Uh, how do the decisions regarding data classification and data privacy, how are they being reflected in policies and procedures? Um, and then there's risk management. Risk management is all about identifying, understanding, and really just responding to the risks associated with the organization. Um, for example, um, the what are the financial and operational risks involved in two entities merging? And how does that impact the overall cybersecurity landscape? Um, now, GRC, cybersecurity, and IT, um, they take the risks outlined, and they not only apply a business perspective, but they also apply a technical perspective. And this combined forms a really, just a more comprehensive understanding of risk. And so lastly, there's compliance. Um, this is really taking that governance and that risk management and really applying them to the legal and regulatory requirements. Now, GRC teams can navigate the ever-growing compliance landscape so you don't have to. Um, not only does GRC make sure that systems are designed with compliance in mind, but they also do things like give advanced warning when there's a, a big change regarding like legal or regulatory requirements. They can also help assessing and vetting vendors to make sure they meet the level of requirements that is required by your organization. So really these three items play a major role in cybersecurity as a lot of organizations have to have a GRC framework, not only to keep their data and operations secure, but also that of their partners and their clients. Um, so that's just really overall brief overall 
um, a summary of GRC, but we're going to go over to Darvesh for a little bit uh, more in-depth look at governance. So Darvesh, take it away. Sure. Thanks, Jerry. So governance does, it takes a lot of work, but it kind of is what uh, Jerry was saying is that it protects the data and it protects the clients and the customers, everyone in general. Uh, governance is sort of before, you know, these other things that happen in IT, these breaches and incidents. So governance are things that you can do as you see listed there to protect your entity, your organization. Um, and later on, we'll talk about these different frameworks that help you protect the organization. Um, some of the th these frameworks and IT frameworks will help you do these things. Uh, and in, in this listing, I would say all of them are equally important, um, but I would say asset management is probably the most important thing here. Um, I attended a conference uh, a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if you all are familiar with InfraGuard, but InfraGuard, they had a whole speech about um, protecting the organization and talking about essentially governance. And one of the one of the quotes I remember from there was that if you don't have if you don't know what's in your entity and your environment as far as asset management goes, it's almost like um, an intruder breaking into your into your house and knowing where everything is, but you don't know where everything is. So that them stubbing their toe on the couch, they don't do that because they know where all your assets are, they know where all your high value data is, but you don't know where it is because you don't do things like asset management. So. Um, some of these other things are equally important because they help you once you know where everything is at, um, then you can utilize these other tools to help you protect your assets. So metrics reporting and the uh, cybersecurity frameworks, research management, et cetera. Um, a lot of these things are based on consistency as well. So if you're not consistent, when a uh, ticket comes in and you need to set up a new asset, a new laptop, a desktop, and you're not treating it in a very consistent manner and going through you know, the security policies and the standards, the best practices and procedures, um, things may fall through the cracks and then that creates vulnerabilities. And then you would have to then do assessments to figure out where those vulnerabilities are. It creates a lot more work. Whereas if you have all these things combined with a foundation of asset management, um, you're gonna make sure that you're in a good security posture to maintain your assets within your environment. Um, and cybersecurity frameworks, again, we'll hit a little bit harder in another slide, but um, all four of those five of these things listed here are going to be things that are fo mainly focused on consistency. So if we can go to the next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the risk in GRC. And as you all know, risk is just the, the chance that a negative event could happen. In cybersecurity, GRC, we generally define that as including three components, uh, one of which is the threat. That's what's going to make the negative event happen. And this includes both uh, the stereotypical hackers that we think of, but also natural disasters. Uh, and we can further subdivide these threats into uh, different types of hackers, say uh, nation states, or we could say activists. Um, and then with natural disasters, I mean, we have fires, we have floods, tornadoes, uh, and the purpose of understanding those risks is to uh, apply it in your, your environment. So uh, here in Wisconsin, earthquakes might not be a super significant threat, but maybe tornadoes is something we really care about. If you're a uh, Department of Defense, maybe you care more about nation state actors uh, more than um, just script kiddies or really low level uh, hackers. Vulnerabilities portion is the weakness flaw or error that allows a threat uh, actor to cause damage. This could be um, that your data center is on the coast and it could be hit by a hurricane. Or it could be a technical vulnerability such as a Microsoft Zero Day or uh, the lack of a properly configured firewall. Uh, the consequence piece is once you merge those together, what's going to actually happen? What's the actual damage that could occur? This should include both direct damages, say if there's a tornado, how, do you, uh, how much does it cost to rebuild a structure? but also indirect damages of uh, how do you continue to operate the business while the structure is not usable. Uh, and it's 
a long discussion about how we we measure risk. We take a look at threats, vulnerabilities, and consequences, but we also have a number of tools that we can use to measure risk. Uh, one of which is a business impact analysis. This is taking a particular uh, asset and threat and identifying what happens if that goes offline. Uh, to Jerry and Darvish's points earlier, this really requires that you have a good understanding of your landscape. If you don't know that you have a payroll server, for example, you're not going to do a business impact analysis on it and get an understanding of what happens if that payroll server were to go offline. Once we have an understanding of the business impact uh, related to our assets or data, we can follow a risk assessment process, which is usually a back and forth discussion with the people familiar with both the business and the underlying IT to identify uh, what the risk truly is to that asset. So we'll talk with payroll about a payroll server and say, what happens if that ser server goes down? And maybe that means payroll can't get out and we can't pay our employees. Oh, what does that really uh, mean to the business as a whole? And we'll also talk about risk mitigations. Those are things like, uh, do we have vulnerability management processes around the server? Uh, do we have a firewall that protects the server? Uh, if the physical server were hit by a tornado, do we have backups that would allow us to uh, bring that data back up and continue with the operations. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Darvish. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so I mentioned earlier utilizing these uh, frameworks to uh, manage your IT department or, or your infrastructure to protect CIA of your data, your systems, et cetera. So with a, you know, I've never worked on a, a team where they said, yeah, we have enough people. <laughs> I, I would uh, pay money to hear someone say that they have enough people to do things like that. Um, so the question is, when you have to do a risk assessment, kind of what Steve was talking about, the business impact analysis, where do you focus your time and how do you focus your time as a, as a team that exists within an entity? And one of the things is that you can you can base off of how you secure things. It's based off of the laws, regulations, policies, and standards for your data classification. So based off of that first, so one of the, you're going to pick one of these things as a, a chief information officer of some sort. So you're going to say our organization is mainly in the PCI, the HIPAA, or the FARPA category. So you have to do assessments based off of this law or this category of things. And then based off of that, you're going to do your risk assessments or what is required based on um, that framework. So for and some of these frameworks are very black and white. They tell you exactly what they want and they tell you when they want it. Um, you have to check these assets. These have to be secure. You have to deploy firewalls. You have to do this. There could be a baseline of things that you just want to apply across the board, which would be a good idea. Um, some of these other ones like HIPAA, for example, are not very black and white. Um, so they will be very broad because if they wanted to update them, it would take a lot of time, it would take a lot of push to change them. So we get this question all the time in HIPAA of, hey, can I use email to send PHI? And you know, if you look up uh, the CFRs, Code for Federal, federal re uh, Requirements, it's not going to tell you, yeah, use 128 you know, bit encryption. It's not going to tell you that. So what you have to do is you have to say, well, we're going to follow HIPAA because we're some sort of clinic of, of some sort. Um, and we're going to, we're also going to take NIST or CSF or something else and apply it on top of HIPAA, which gives us that substance of what we need to do. And so those are, those are ways that you can do that. And, and what makes governance so important in these categories is that if you're not doing, uh, you know, HIPAA or something else, um, you could get fined, and these could be, you know, millions of dollars, thousands of dollars. They can really hurt you. So one of the first things that they ask you, if you do have a breach or an incident in HIPAA, the Office for Civil Rights will come in, and the first things they'll ask you is, have you done an assessment? Have you done anything with that assessment? And if you, if it's a no, then it could be stiffer fines. So um, those are definitely things that you're going to want to do. Um, and I'll turn it over to Jerry to tell you why GRC matters. Awesome. Um, so yeah, why does why does GRC matter? Um, it's, it's an important question and there are many different reasons, right? 
First of all, it makes uh, it makes an organization more aware. Leaders naturally have a finger on the pulse of a business in order to watch for those changes that introduce risk to objectives. But key to this is GRC's ability to turn data into information that can be analyzed and shared in every relevant direction. It also makes an organization much more aligned. GRC aligns that risk management and compliance to support and inform business objectives. This requires uh, continuously aligning the objectives of GRC to the organization, but information generated from GRC management is strategically evaluated so that it can affect appropriate change. Um, it also increases responsiveness. Organizations cannot react to something they do not sense, and mature, mature GRC management is focused on gaining, gaining greater awareness through understanding of information that drives decisions, actions, and improves transparency. But really critically, it also cuts through the masses of data to uncover what an organization needs to know to make the right decision. Um, it also increases agility. Now, stakeholders and a board require an organization to be more than fast. They require it to be agile. Being fast isn't helpful if the organization is headed in the wrong direction. Um, and GRC enables um, quick, coordinated, and well thought out actions. Um, and this also allows uh, the use of GRC to take advantage of uh, take advantage of strategic opportunities and confidently stay on course in the right direction. Uh, it also improves resiliency. Uh, as they say, the best laid plans of mice and men fail. Organizations need to be able to bounce back quickly from changes um, and risks with limited business impact. Um, GRC allows an organization to have sufficient tolerances to allow for some missteps, but also have the confidence to adapt and respond to opportunities rapidly. And lastly, we have efficiency. So GRC uh, builds business muscle and trims the fat, so to speak, and it rids the expense of unnecessary duplication, redundancy, and a misallocation of resources to make the organization leaner and overall with GRC more efficient with decisions regarding the, the application of resources. So very briefly, that is all the reasons why GRC is important and why you should care and a little bit about how it affects the organization overall. Um, and with that, we're going to jump over to Steve. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some examples that uh, the presenters here have dealt with and a little bit about how GRC is related. I mean, uh, the first is a ransomware incident that destroyed almost three years of research data. Um, this was a, a significant uh, damage to the researchers involved uh, and it wasn't uh, wasn't necessarily under any certain compliance framework that uh, they should have uh, protected the data more um, but a stronger governance risk and compliance function uh, that was involved uh, could have helped them identify the severity of the risk that they faced and identified appropriate stop gaps or uh, protections and also help provide the backing to make something happen about it. Uh, provide a GRC function can describe uh, what the cost is and what we're going to protect against. Maybe we could have spent uh, $500 a year and protected a uh, million dollars worth of research data. Uh, another one of my colleagues has worked for a manufacturer involved with the Department of Defense contracts. And we see these also on campus where the Department of Defense will require stringent uh, GRC processes to ensure confidentiality of uh, the work that we or a manufacturer is doing for them. And at the same time, they might also require us to prove some of our processes are in place and are working. Uh, it's also becoming more common that insurers or external uh, agencies are going to require that they, they scan us as a technical measure to identify uh, what, what our posture looks like and uh, that we're actually doing the things that we say we are in a GRC perspective. It also affects our day-to-day -day life. Uh, 
uh, another one of my colleagues here, uh, has a significant amount of work in uh, large electrical utilities. They are required to comply with uh, NERC SIP, which is uh, requirements regarding the reliability of the electrical grid. Uh, these requirements are put into place to help protect uh, everyone uh, and make sure that we can rely on uh, the electrical grid. And it could have catastrophic uh, consequences if uh, some of these providers were not uh, complying with the requirements. We also see this in the healthcare setting where we deal with uh, patient health information. And as users of the healthcare system, we want our healthcare information to be protected. As some of my colleagues mentioned earlier, um, particularly around the compliance functions, the first thing that regulators are gonna do when they come in is gonna ask you, are you meeting these requirements? Can you prove it? Can you prove that you're actually doing something about it? Not that you're just checking the box. Yes, we oh, we did a risk assessment, therefore we, we're good. It's what have you done with that? And have you carried that forward to actually reduce uh, risk to your environment and follow through on those compliance requirements? And then I'll turn it over to Amy. Thanks, Steve. So again, to our audience today, I'm hoping this kind of pulls everything together for you and kind of using the governance risk and compliance mindset and how it can be applied to say more generally IT as well. So you've heard from all of my colleagues, all of the reasons it's important, what it is, all that good stuff. Um, for me, this really kind of the point of this slide is to really make sure that you understand that you can really use this as well, um, hopefully in your day to day jobs. So one of the best parts is you heard Darvesh talk about frameworks and how important those are, um, and you heard some of the impacts from my other colleagues. And so one of the best things about this is it is a framework for aligning IT with the overall objectives of an organization. So again, asking yourself, am I seeing the bigger picture? Does it make sense what I'm doing in IT that it really aligns with the business um, objectives, the mission, the vision? And I know sometimes that can be really hard, I think, to make that connection because you're like, well, I just work on a system. Like what that, why would I have to worry about the business objectives? But I think from the GRC perspective, it's really about, okay, well, this is the mission and vision. Are you helping, does this system help move that forward? Are you finding those efficiencies? Are you finding where there's resiliency in this? Because it probably is important in some way and kind of understanding what that looks like. Also, as you heard my colleagues talk about understanding your internal and external environment, GRC is really about knowing where things are, what they do, what kind of data they support, all that kind of stuff. And if you don't really know that, you don't really have a basis for GRC. So that's a really important part of this. I think one of the, the things I enjoy most, I will say about GRC is the strategic planning. So again, with that first one of kind of providing a framework for IT and the overall objectives, it also then allows you to say, okay, from my personal perspective, so the different layers, right? Here's the mission and vision, here's where my system environment, here's how it fits into that. What are we going to do for goals then? What does that look like for us? And kind of aligning all of those is really the mindset of GRC is to help be more agile, be able to make those decisions. And the way you do that is making sure that your strategic planning is ready to go um, and that you've understood what that strategic planning looks like and how it all fits in. Um, another reason is explaining the why. Um, I know we hear in GRC all the time, like cybersecurity just says no. Well, GRC is really there to also kind of help you say, well, here's why we're asking you to do this. Here's why we're asking you to implement these controls. Here's why that it is important that my system that I own has resiliency. Here's why I need these things. Um, and having those why statements really kind of helps with the different audiences that you work with who may not particularly understand IT, may not understand cybersecurity, et cetera. Um, again, the ability to have that necessary information to make quick decisions. Again, another one for, um, I will say that next one below, documentation of processes is really where I see a lot of times this happens. Sometimes people are very visual learners. So when you document something, especially if you put together a visual or something like that, you'll begin to see those efficiencies a lot. And you'll begin to see, okay, if previously this approval needed to happen within the system, and now we're getting a new system, so kind of that change management, 
can I put it somewhere else? Can I make it more efficient? Do they, do we still need this approval? Is it even still a control that I need? So asking yourself all those questions as you're doing some change management, maybe you're moving to a new system or think something like that. Maybe your environment is changing in some way can be really helpful um, with GRC in mind. Um, these next two, again, kind of talk through what my colleagues have talked through again, kind of the why does GRC matter with the duplication, redundancy, and misallocation, as well as then compliance for the laws, regulations, policies, and standards. The last two to me are also important where understanding resiliency requirements for your environment. GRC really can help you with this, can provide a framework for that, can provide questions for you to ask yourself. And I think this has become even more so uh, an important fact with the increase in cyber attacks, as well as you know, with a more remote workforce, um, and as well as with, I will say, the, the increase in kind of um, the cybersecurity uh, what do I want to say? Cybersecurity teams in general, I guess I'll say, or um, kind of how cybersecurity has continued to grow. And finally, that risk and risk calculation, as you heard my colleague Steve talk about, um, you know, again, kind of you being able to say, okay, what's the risk for my environment? What does that look like? Am I able to calculate that? Especially then, again, when it comes to change management, has the risk changed? Maybe I'm deciding to integrate with another system. Maybe there's other users that are deciding to use my system at this point. How does that change the risk? What does that look like? And am I able to kind of walk through uh, that risk calculation for myself so that I'm aware of what's going on? So with that, that is the end of our presentation. Laurel, I'll turn it over to you in case there are any questions. Yeah, thank you very much for a great presentation, everybody. Um, so um, uh, please put your questions in the chat and I will go ahead and read them to our presenters. Um, looks like we have a couple comments in the chat. Um, one of them um, by Lisa Johnston, um, has a question at the very end here. Uh, what are some ways to operationalize this framework? Anyone? Steve, Jerry, or Darvesh, you want to take that at all? Or otherwise I can. I just didn't want, <laughs> didn't want to step on anyone's toes. Uh, I guess I don't understand the question. So operationalize by bringing the teams together. So there's so within HIPAA on, in our institution, we actually assign um, different organizational units, a coordinator that handles IT um, related uh, topics. And then there's privacy as well so for each operational organizational unit. And those teams get together on a monthly um, uh, uh, cadence. And we talk about operations, things that are happening, <clears throat> things that are happening in our area. And then we have another month every quarterly meeting where as you kind of what uh, that person asked that question with the, with the board. Um, so there's different levels that meet on a cadence and we talk about you know what we need to do and how we need to do it. Um, for other frameworks that happen on campus, they meet consistently throughout the year and they talk about assessments, they talk about upgrading their IT infrastructure. If there's reorganization within that, that IT environment, um, those things are brought to the table immediately and discussed with uh, cybersecurity. So those are some ways that we we keep up to date with what's happening on our, our campus. And I'll just add that I think I've seen this almost do more work informally. So I like what Darvesh had said about the formal areas that you have to talk about this, but I've also seen where as you kind of get to know these different teams and get to know where maybe you kind of slot in in relation to those, um, a lot of times it's getting one of everyone at the table and just saying, hey, can we have a quick meeting about this? I want to talk about this. And I think I do that to Dr. Besh all the time. So <laughs> um, it's really nice to have those people to go to then. And, and you can work out some of those more complicated issues then with kind of informally just getting everyone together and kind of having a conversation when something arises. Thanks, Amy. Uh, we got a follow up to that. Um, our, uh, people allowed to attend those quarterly or yearly meetings in order to discover more ideas concerning cybersecurity? Uh, those, those yearly and quarterly uh, meetings, uh, those are typically pretty closed meetings because we are talking about departmental vulnerabilities and mitigating some other things. So I would have to go to each one of them and ask for permission, um, but we can put together something that's more open and, and, and uh, more related for cybersecurity. There actually is another team within the Office of Cybersecurity that takes care of training and, and doing some more of those open-handed 
uh, meetings. So I could look into that for you if you want to reach out to me and, and ask that question. Sure. The other thing I'd recommend is we do have MIST, which is the UW-Madison Information Security Team, which is more open for all IT professionals really at UW-Madison. Um, and I'll actually be, I think, in the the fun thing uh, the IT professionals conference put together uh, later in the day of kind of meeting those different people. So if that's something you're interested in too, feel free to connect with me at that time. Thanks. Um, we are at time and there's a 11 to uh, sessions starting at 11. So I think what we'll do is I'll go ahead and give my closing remarks. Um, and then there are a few more questions in the chat. Uh, so I think we can hang out here and answer those if those people who ask questions wanna stick around, but I'll formally end the session now. Uh, so I just wanna thank Amy, Darvesh, Jerry, and Steve for putting together this really great introduction uh, to this very important topic. It was really informative. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, go ahead, enjoy sessions throughout the day. We have more on the cybersecurity topic um, today and tomorrow if you're interested in diving even deeper into this. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>